Hi there, my name is John, um, you number 1053593, and I'm here with my really great friend, uh, David, who's um, a little older than me, so I, it's great to get a good perspective um, on this assignment. Um, I'm just gonna be talking about um, how pol air pollution has affected his life and some of the patterns that he's seen, um, especially growing up, and some solutions and kind of uh, things that he thinks we can do to kind of better us, um, both on the individual scale and in the major scale. So I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself. Um, we have him right here. Hello, my name is David, as you said, I am his friend and he asked me to uh, conduct an interview about air pollution and how it has affected my life. And he is right, I'm a little bit older than him. Um, and first hand, um, I have experienced uh, pollution uh, since I was a kid, so. Yes, David, we're so happy to have you here. Um, first off, uh, I, I would really like to know um, kind of what's your perspective been on air pollution? How, how has it changed from when you were younger to, to now? If it's any different or if you've noticed any changes uh, growing up? Uh, so I think the immediate change or just the scope of me paying attention to pollution itself would have been in 2001. So I was in Samoa, then I came to the United to the United States and uh, immediately came to Utah. And one thing I did notice about from that time and to now is that pollution has been on the rise. And I would say it's because from that time to now, you know, a lot of things have boomed, uh, new cars, new manufacturing plants, the need for uh, expansion. Um, I would say that it has impacted me negatively just uh, because of the air quality. I know that back then, just walking out uh, or doing everything, like just going to school, um, there wouldn't be any, you know, significant smell. It would just either smell like either trees or rain if it did rain. But now when you walk outside, you can actually smell a bit of chemical in that, so. That is true, that is true. Um, do you feel like it's taken a toll on you in any way, like mentally or physically um, growing up? Or do you notice any mental or physical changes since you were younger to now with air quality and pollution? Uh, I believe at a younger age, it's not something that I would have paid attention to or honestly no one would have paid attention to. Um, it only became a big thing, uh, I believe, in 2006, around that time. I did notice that... Um, certain times of the year it would either be a different climate or there would be an extreme climate change the one example that i have is uh during uh, the month of october it would always either start getting colder and then it would start snowing in october um from when i was a kid but now that all of that's changed um it would start getting uh i, I would say it'd still get colder but the snow wouldn't start coming until like end of November, beginning of December, or sometimes not at all, as we've experienced uh, about like two to three years ago. Uh, there was absolutely no snow for the entire time, and it just, just barely started snowing sometime in like January, February. Um, I don't believe um, that it, it took too much toll on my mental health, just because honestly, I don't think about pollution, but as I'm getting older now, it's something that I wake up to because I wake up in the morning and it's getting colder and I know that inversion is going to be starting and I know that just thinking about it I could feel my throat tightening and just feeling like I've talked way more than I should have just because of the rawness of the air pollution I would say uh, I would say that was a physical detriment do you feel like it's important to be um knowledgeable in this and, and to teach the public like what are some things that you feel like you've changed differently about your routine um, to be more self-conscious about air pollution or if you've ever even thought about changing any daily lifestyle habits to accommodate or help with the air pollution problem um i do believe that all of us should be conscious about pollution because it does affect everybody um, not just ourselves i mean the planet is a living thing, uh, you know, 
either we do something now to fix the problem or to alleviate the problem as soon as possible before it becomes irreparable. Um, first thing, of course, would be the uh, incident that happened in Texas. Um, they got that uh, uh, cold wave that went through. I believe it was like a rip stream. I don't know what it, what it was, but a lot of people were affected by that. And I think that's one of the examples how um, we should be taking it seriously because none of that is normal. Um, and the fact that it happened and it was a thing and now it's just died off like it wasn't a big thing but now we're getting closer to another winter and I feel like it's just gonna come back um, so across the world I think that we should be looking into ways to go to green energy um, we should be putting a lot of our resources into getting a lot of a lot more cleaner energy uh, same thing with the polar ice caps they're melting sea levels are rising uh, oceans are getting a lot warmer um, and you know beating a dead horse uh, would be greenhouse gases the mm -hmm. planet is getting warmer so there's a lot of proof so yeah you're you're very right on on the melting ice caps, ocean uh, acidification, um, runoff from fertilizer, you know, all those increasing level in carbon dioxide is definitely a negative um, to many people's health in the environment, like you mentioned. Um, just on, um, compared to a local scale, um, kind of what do, you, what do you think should be the first step uh, globally or even nationally that we can take in order to try and reduce emissions? I, I believe our carbon footprint has, I think, tripled since uh, the past 20 years from past research um, What are some things that we can do to lower or that you believe that we can lower that carbon footprint that we're kind of emitting? The US does have the highest compared to other countries So it does seem to be kind of a localized problem here But maybe a change here could kind of ignite a spark across the, the globe that could help lower that um, Locally, I believe since we are in a valley and we are seeing the effects of our pollution because it's getting colder and the version the inversion is coming um, honestly it makes sense that we can actually see uh, what we need to do um, which would be either following the uh, UDOT guidelines for carpooling um, locally if uh, your friends or co-workers are same shift, same hours, you should uh, carpool together or utilize the UTA here. Uh, there is tracks, front runner. Um, I know that there are a lot of options as well as Uber or uh, Lyft. Um, I, would, I would say that you might want to get a group Uber or Lyft, but uh, people probably might not do that. But I believe the greener options would be either bike or scooters. Um, comparing that to national level, um, I, the, I think the best example of what uh, doing something can help uh, change the climate for the better in terms of pollution would be comparing it to Beijing, China. I, I don't know what year it was, maybe it was in 2017, but uh, there was a big celebration. Um, China banned all cars um, for at least two weeks and they actually had pictures of before they banned all cars or activity for motor vehicles to the end of the two weeks. Um, completely clear skies, everything was clean, clear, um, and I believe it was due to you know, a lot of nature working overtime or rains. And we see that here as well uh, when the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. uh, they, no one was going out, um, mandates were in place. Uh, we could see all the pollution and when everyone's at home or just um, making sure not to go out not to spread COVID you could see the pollution drop you could see uh, mountains you could see you know clear across the valley uh, to other mountain ranges and you know it's small things like that that people don't think about uh, how fixing the climate crisis is easy but it's a group effort and you know even if you form groups, you know, there, it only takes like a group of people or that one person to not do anything that will ruin it for everybody else. So, 
climate change can be an easy thing, but because there are a lot of people involved in the scheme of things, it's going to be hard because each person has an opinion, they have their lifestyle, and not everybody is wanting to better the environment. You're right. I was going to say one of the major challenges that uh, we see with something as easy as this is giving up that ease of access and giving up that easy lifestyle, but it's kind of hard when it's the necessary step to be able to take. Um, I, I think it's great that you have um, living experience in other countries as well, in other places, because um, you're able to see more from an outside world um, how different the air quality is there compared to here. I think it's crazy because um, Salt Lake City is one of the highest in carbon emissions and the terrible air quality. Is there anything different you think that they do here compared to other places that would contribute to that from any personal experience or personal knowledge that you may have? Um, I wouldn't say that there is anything different here compared to everywhere else. I feel like a lot of states now are industrialized, especially around the big cities. Uh, I know that on my recent trip to Oklahoma, um, just going down into the airport, you could actually see the level of pollution across the valley that, that's out there. You know, there's not a lot of mountains, so it's just complete plain. Um, here, same thing, you can see the pollution. Again, it's trapped in the valley, so it doesn't actually go out unless there's rain or heavy winds. Um, and if, you know, pollution does come from other states, like the great fires that, it, you know, that's happening, uh, that does get stuck here until we get some rain. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't believe that there's actually any difference of what we're doing. I just believe everyone's doing the same thing and the level of pollution is increasing. I don't know of any examples of states going green. I believe the best one I could think of would be Las Vegas with their um, solar panels uh, or probably near Scandinavia and their uh, hydro-powered uh, turbines. That was the best thing that I can think of, uh, of other countries um, or in our nation, at least, the best that we're doing to get cleaner energy. Um, oh, and I, <laughs> just talking on that, uh, the power grid in Texas, um, a lot of states have tried switching over to wind turbines uh, or hydroelectricity. Um, and with Texas, they actually closed off their grid, um, so they run completely on, I believe, their own system. So I believe that's why they suffered greatly, because they didn't get on with the rest of the United States with the green energy um, and wanting to have a connected power grid with other states. Um, I think that's the best thing that I could think of. Thank you, David. Very knowledgeable. I really appreciate your time today and for joining us and letting me ask you these questions. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be a great insight um, to many people's opinions. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you.